EVs are paving the way for the future of the automobile industry. It's to see more electric vehicles than American affecting the future of the auto industry. Saab unveiled a new 621 mile range EV. Saab is back and better than ever with an EV that will leave you breathless. Their latest unveiling, a new electric vehicle, boasts an impressive range of 621 miles on a single charge. With a technological prowess that rivals even that of the highly toted Lucid Air, which so far held the title for the longest range EV in the market, this storied Swedish automaker, known for its avant-grade designs and engineering, has resurfaced after years of dormancy with a revolutionary electric vehicle that promises to leave its competitors in the dust. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the features of this new vehicle, including its impressive range and advanced torque vectoring system, and explore the implications of the new development for the future of EV technology. As we said earlier, if you remember Saab, you already knew the car company was known for its quirky and unique designs. Well, after going bankrupt, they changed their name to National Electric Vehicle Sweden, or NEVS, and have been quietly working on an incredible electric car that boasts a range of over 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers. Kilometers. Unfortunately though, it seems like this beauty won't be hitting the road anytime soon. It's almost as if someone is trying to suppress it from being released, and can you believe that? Nevs has been around for more than a decade now, and their electric sedan is a sight to behold. It is sleek, futuristic, and will make your jaw drop with its stunning design. But sadly, this masterpiece has been put into hibernation. It's a shame because this car deserves to be on the road, turning heads and setting the standard for what an electric car can be. So why is it being held back? Well, let's find out. The Emily GT, the new EV we're talking about, is causing a stir in the world of electric vehicles. And for good reason. With a jaw-dropping range of over 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles, this car is not just playing around. And what's the secret to this impressive range? A massive 175 kilowatt hour battery. That's what. Some might still say it's overkill, but seriously, who's complaining when you can go that far without a charge? And wait, there's more. If that battery size is a little too much for you, don't fret. The Emily GT also offers options for a 140 kilowatt hour battery and a 100 5 kilowatt hour battery size, so you can choose the one that suits your needs. And that's not all yet. How about being able to charge your electric car quickly and wirelessly using a pad connected to a fixed hub? That's right, the Emily GT has got you covered with 11 kilowatt wireless charging, which means you can easily charge your car at home without the hassle of cords and plugs. Now let's talk about the in-wheel motors. This is a feature that sets the Emily GT apart from most electric cars out there. While many vehicles use a belt drive, the Emily GT boasts hub motors, with one mounted on each wheel, giving it a total of 484 horsepower. Some might say that this is controversial and there are concerns about how they will perform in the long term, given the impact the wheels take from the road. Saab was a company that always aimed to push the boundaries of what was possible in the automotive industry, and their decision to use hub motors in their cars was no exception. According to program director and former Saab engineer Peter Dahl, this choice gave the Saab team a level of torque vectoring control that was unparalleled in the industry. So what exactly is torque vectoring? Well, it's a system that allows the car to adjust the amount of torque that's sent to each wheel individually, which can help improve traction, handling, and overall performance. And with the hub motors that Saab used, this level of control was taken to the next level. In fact, Dahl claimed that the car could even turn without using the steering wheel, just by using the motors themselves. And that's some serious precision. But that's not all. Dahl also mentioned that the hub motors helped eliminate something called backlash. Now, if you're not an engineer, you may be scratching your head at that term. Essentially, backlash is the amount of play or slop that's present in a system, which can lead to imprecise movements and a lack of responsiveness. By using hub motors, Saab was able to eliminate this issue, resulting in a much more direct and solid feeling when driving. Of course, there are always trade-offs when it comes to engineering decisions. One downside of using hub motors is that they can add unsprung weight to each wheel, which can impact things like ride quality and handling. However, the Saab team was able to address this issue by incorporating a good chassis with air suspension and active dampers. Interestingly, Dahl also drew a comparison between hub motors and the rotational mass of a bicycle wheel. Cyclists are known to focus heavily on reducing the weight of the rotational mass of their wheels, as this can have a big impact on the overall speed and agility of the bike. 
With hub motors, however, that rotational mass is significantly greater, which is something that had to be taken into account when designing the car. There was also a high-performance variant of the Emily that was in the works. This beast was planned to have a whopping 653 horsepower and 1,623 pound-feet of torque, which translates to over 2,000 newton meters of pure power. And if that wasn't impressive enough, this beauty was capable of going from 0 to 62 miles per hour, or 0 to 100, in just 3.2 seconds. The styling of this car is absolutely jaw-dropping. It's reminiscent of the classic Saab 93 and 95 models, with a touch of modern Italian design. The car was designed by an unmanned Italian genius and refined by former Saab engineers. And boy, did they do a fantastic job. Not only is the exterior stunning, but the interior is unique, simple, and elegant. Sadly, the company behind this masterpiece, the Evergrande Group, hit financial troubles in 2020, and only six of the planned 20 prototypes were actually built. Evergrande has since put Saab into hibernation, causing the loss of jobs for 320 of the Swedish firm's employees. However, there's still hope as a skeleton crew of 20 staff members who know how to make this beauty still remain. In fact, someone should pie this company and bring Emily to life. For example, Polestar has already signed a lease for part of Nev's or Saab's Trollhattan factory in Sweden. So who knows what the future holds? It's not often that we see a factory get a second lease on life. But that's exactly what's happening at the Trollhattan factory. This historic building, once home to Saab, is now partly being repurposed as an R&D base for Polestar, a Volvo spin-off, as they work towards developing the electric vehicles of the future. And the best part? Polestar is looking to employ some of the 320 staff who were previously laid off by Evergrande. It's always great to see companies investing in their local communities and creating job opportunities for those who have been impacted by economic downturns. Speaking of Evergrande, it seems the new CEO of Nevs, Nina Salander, is also actively seeking a buyer for the Emily project. Interested parties are encouraged to contact the company, although it remains unclear whether mass-producing the vehicle is a viable option at this time. According to Peter Dahl, a former Saab engineer and the current program director, the Emily project is about a year and a half away from being production ready. While there are still some details to iron out, Dahl notes that the prototypes are completely drivable, albeit missing some safety features and that the 52 kilowatt hour battery pack from the Saab 93 is powering the vehicles. Despite the uncertainty surrounding the future of the Saab brand, Dahl remains optimistic. He believes that another Chinese company may come along and purchase Saab because of its strong brand recognition. For Dahl, the most important thing is that Saab's legacy lives on, and that the 320 staff who were previously let go have the opportunity to return to work. As we continue to transition towards electric vehicles and sustainable transportation solutions, it's encouraging to see companies like Nevs investing in R&D and creating new job opportunities for local communities. And who knows, perhaps we'll see Saab back on the road sooner than we think.